Broadcasting from Manhattan Beach and the World Wide Web, you're listening to CHSRHealthyLife.net. As a service to our listeners, this program is for general information and entertainment purposes only. CHSRHealthyLife.net does not recommend, endorse, or object to the views, products, or topics expressed or discussed by show hosts or their guests. We suggest you always consult with your own personal, medical, financial, or legal advisor. Hey there, and welcome back to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show. This is a place of inspiration, education, and hope for a kinder, healthier, and more sustainable world. On this program, we have conversations with cutting-edge thought leaders and change makers who share their knowledge and wisdom to help all of us find solutions to the toughest health challenges we're facing today. Uh, I'd like you to please join me in giving thanks to our show sponsor, New Roots Herbal, who have been making this show possible for the past three years. Uh, to learn more about their incredible line of products, visit NewRootsHerbal.com. And be sure to join us next time when we'll have the privilege of hearing from award-winning licensed speech and language pathologist Dr. Elaine Fogel Schneider. She's the author of several books, but including the, amongst those is Massaging Your Baby, The Joy of Touch Time, talking about the healing power of touch, uh, given, given all the six feet apart world we're living in right now and um, the rise in touch deprivation, which I know in my practice as a psychologist has been really impacting folks, um, and maybe you. Um, we're, um, you know, we're, we're really... We're, we're dealing with something we've never dealt with in our lifetime here. Uh, anyway, I thought that Dr. Elaine's knowledge and guidance couldn't be more timely. And in addition to next show being of such, you know, its significance uh, in and of itself, especially during the COVID pandemic here, uh, it's also going to be a particularly poignant show for me because it will be my last broadcast here on Healthy Life Radio before I take a hiatus from hosting the program. Some of you may have seen on uh, social media that I just did a video post yesterday uh, to share a little bit about that, and I'll be talking more with all of you about that and kind of my plans up and coming um, uh, next time. So I really hope you tune in um, for that show. And as always, don't worry if you can't listen to the show when it airs live because it always is available again. The recording, our wonderful producer Jay uh, gets that recording up and going um, uh, and then all of the previous shows between what's here and then those that then end up, um, eventually they all end up on YouTube. Um, you can access all of that and learn more about our great guests like who we have here today and access tons of free wellness resources anytime on my website at TeresaNicasio.com. And, yes, that's Teresa with an H, T-H-E-R-E-S-A-N like Nancy, I-C-A, and then two S's like Sam, Sam, I-O as in octopus.com, TeresaNicasio.com. Uh, I'd like to, as you know, I like to dedicate shows, um, and today I'd like to dedicate, it's very perfect for today's show, um, but it also is, is, is kind of a place in my heart, a big place in my heart. Um, yes, I'd like to de- dedicate today's show to my dear friend and neighbor. Actually, we share a house together. We, we did share our home together, um, uh, Carlotta Ritchie. And Carlotta was diagnosed with cancer, um, lung cancer, several years ago, or uh, uh, about two years ago when she was finally properly diagnosed. And what she got two extra years, basically, because of the gifts and of um, integrative oncology, integrative cancer treatments, um, IV therapies, um, yeah, immunotherapies and such. And so she got not only longer life, but she also had, she got to ride her bike, her, her, her bike, her horse again. She Anyway, um, she was such an inspiration and sunshine, and uh, she just died um, a couple weeks ago. So uh, we're all missing Carlotta, but also celebrating the gift of life that she was able to extend 
because of doctors like the, who we have with us today. Um, be, we have today with us, it's, a, it's such a privilege, uh, award-winning naturopathic medical doctor and researcher, Dr. Paul Anderson. Um, and he was probably behind a lot of the treatments that Carlotta herself was able to benefit from. Uh, a little bit about Paul. Um, he's an internationally recognized authority in the field of integrative cancer research, um, as well as the treatment of chronic diseases, genomic conditions, metabolic repair, and autoimmune and infectious disorders. Um, he, you, you may have seen him especially lately because during this whole COVID pandemic, he has been the go-to to um, uh, discuss some of the research that he's done um, and the NIH research we did for you know, like five years uh, for you know, huge research projects with IV therapies, um, uh, looking at vitamin C and other um, you know, nutrition, nutrigenomics, if you will, um, nutritional supplements. We're going to hear more about that, that you know, IV and other other. Um, Creative and and uh, seemingly now there has been some great research uh, benefit benefiting, us, benefiting all of us, but again with the COVID pandemic, he has been all over the media, and so you will know this man um, anyway. But for today, the primary focus, which overlaps all of this, is um, he's going to be chatting with us about outside the box cancer therapies, which he was actually a co-author of a book with the same title, and he has another book coming out about cancers from diagnosis to impact. Empowerment, and we're going to hear more about that as well. So anyway, there's just so much more I could say about about Dr. Anderson. Um, so after today's interview, you can learn more about him, as well as find links to several of his articles and videos on my website. You know that TeresaNicasio.com website. Be sure to check it out. Welcome to the show, Paul, and thank you so much for taking time from your crazy, crazy pack schedule uh, to join us today. Thank you so much for having me. This will be fun. Ab- absolutely. And, you know, I always like to start with, with uh, you know, that, that big fat why question. Um, and can you start, Paul, by sharing, you know, just a, a real Reader's Digest version here, a little snippet about how you found yourself. Um, I know your parents, your dad was like a doctor, your mom was a nurse. It's like you come from, you know, your whole world has been about medicine, um, but how you found yourself uh, in in this very unique um, and, and, and uh, cutting-edge field, uh, integrative oncology. Yeah, so uh, so the very short version, as as I've practiced it on all these interviews I've done. In, is, in an uh, elevator, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, 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 it's, it's still it's a few sentences, but um, essentially uh, because as you said, my family, uh, at least my parents, were in, in medicine, and I grew up around that. You know, most of our family friends were in the healthcare world, many of them anyway. Um, so uh, in in the late 1970s, I was working in medical laboratories and uh, doing that sort of work and then did a little bit of uh, research work there. Um, and uh, then I, I had uh, wanted to complete medical school, didn't ever do it because I thought, you know, it would probably be boring. Uh, and uh, it, when you grow up around it, it's not as, it's not as shiny as, you know, it might be. Um, and then through time, uh, through a lot of things in my own family and the health of my children who were young then, they're all adults now, um, decided to go back and, uh, and finish and when I got out of medical school, I, I thought I wanted to just, you know, really do primary care. And I was I was a family doctor. Um, and what started to happen was because I was also trained in uh, naturopathic and integrative therapies, I started getting people coming with uh, complex illnesses and cancer, and that I never thought that was going to happen. Um, and through that. Uh, because I would help them and I would do things, not that we knew a whole lot back then, but we did the best we could, um, I started getting more and more people with, with cancer. Uh, and so really from a kind of a grassroots thing, my practice really morphed into cancer and chronic illness very quickly. And uh, one of the things that I was doing because of my background was a lot of IV intravenous therapies, um, but also, as you mentioned, you know, a lot of oral, uh, herbal and nutritional therapies, et cetera, and kind of, kind of grew up with what is now the modern, uh, integrative and naturopathic oncology world. Um, so there were certain 
personally a lot of information prior to me and the people who do that now, uh, but what I would consider my generation sort of helped to move it to the next step. So we stand on the shoulders of the pioneers. Um, and so then that led to about 10 years ago, uh, I was working at a university and they, were, they had an NIH National Institute of Health grant uh, to do research on humans with integrative oncology. And they realized that doing the IV therapy part was quite complex. And because of my background and also because I worked for the university at the time, uh, I started their interventional uh, cancer clinic. Uh, and so it wasn't that we were doing really a lot of new things. We did some new things, certainly. But what we did is sort of uh, put all of that experience that I and others had into a clinical research area and were able to track our outcomes and, you know, codify kind of the IV therapies for cancer patients. And we did all kind. We did diet and nutrition and herbs and all sorts of other things as well. But my part was the IV part. Uh, and then the... You know, in the in the five years since that study ended, I've been involved in a number of other things and uh, uh, and uh, have had numerous practices. Now I now I teach other doctors how to do this and uh, and help doctors with their uh, with their practices. So that's that's a real short version of whatever since 1976 number of years is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, and, you know, and, and you know, folks, as you're listening, you know, he's actually a doctor. You know, one of the docs that um, the uh, doctors in China and and all, well, probably New York and all over have been consulting with about the IV therapies with the COVID. Um, and I mean, he's really he's really a, a, a wonderful resource. So, what, you know, just uh, you know, what are some of the? Well, first of all, you know, tell tell folks a little bit about what IV therapies are. What are some of the kinds of some of your faves in terms of what you, you know, through the research and what you've discovered um, have been beneficial for for some of your patients. And we'll talk a little bit about how everybody's different and, and, and you know, there's not one size fits sure. all kind of thing. Uh, but, you know, what what are some of the IV therapies that, that you think are particularly worthy of note? Because basically what we're wanting to do on this show is empower uh, the listeners to know about what are some of the options that are out there that they can then be in search of and, and talking with their, their, their healthcare professionals and finding doctors, of, um, you know, and, and treatments when they're when they're really, you know, maybe they are a loved one um, are, are are dealing with cancer. So, what are some of the options that that you love? Certainly, yes. Um, I, I think the one that almost everybody has heard of, or most people, and certainly we would have the most people coming and asking for up front is IV vitamin C therapy um, because it's probably been around the longest. It was uh, popularized by Drs. Cameron and Paul in, uh, in the 70s, and it's gone, you know, it's undergone a lot of bashing, and then it's in the limelight, then it gets bashed in, in cancer. Um, but that's the one that we've probably done the longest. Um, and the important thing with IV vitamin C is really – if you're going to uh, find an integrative practitioner, and nowadays there's um, there are uh, naturopathic oncologists, there's integrative oncologists, there's uh, nurse practitioners and physician assistants who do this work. It's 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 a lot more varied than it was 20 or 30 years ago. Um, so if you're going to work with somebody, you're likely to find the IV vitamin C therapy because it's kind of a cornerstone. The nice thing about it is a couple of things. One is the doses can be customized um, because vitamin C does different things in lower doses intravenously than it does in higher doses, but there's a lot of uh, benefit. The other thing, and this is something because of the NIH work that I wrote extensively on, and there's actually a handbook now for doctors around this, is it used to be believed by the oncologists that vitamin C would counteract, you know, the chemotherapy or would do something bad. And if you look at the actual research that's been published, and this is what I put together, um, there's really almost no interference. In fact, most chemos that have been studied with vitamin C, there's synergy. It's actually beneficial. So it takes away the biggest uh, concern. Now, people still have that concern, but it's it's not a real concern. Uh, It's just a tradition to be concerned about it. so we used it a lot uh, alongside standard therapies. We used it when standard therapies stopped working. We used it when 
people couldn't get standard therapies. Um, and the other thing is is that vitamin C IV can also, let's say you've either you're undergoing a standard therapy or you're recovering from it, it can help your normal cells, the part that don't have cancer, get back to normal function. Uh, and that's the biggest part of staying alive with cancer is keeping your healthy non-cancer cells uh, as healthy non-cancer cells, and that's that's one of the biggest tricks to you know to quality of life and also length of life. So vitamin C is probably the the number one you know therapy, and there's many many others, but I uh, we should probably mention that first. I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely, and and I think one of the reasons why people love vitamin C too is because it's you know in terms of toxicity, it's it, you know the body takes what it needs. Is that correct? It's uh, there's uh, would you yeah. talk about, you know, about that because yeah. sometimes you have to be more careful. But this is one that you don't have to worry so much. Is that right? Mhm. Yeah. So the um, humans don't make their own vitamin C, which is another limitation of being a human. Um, animals do, most animals. Um, and so when, when you get vitamin C even in an IV, uh, your cells actually get to decide how and how much to use. When we give it IV, because people will say, well, can I just take it orally? Well, for, for maintaining yourselves, yes, you can, certainly. When we give it IV at higher doses, it's actually to overwhelm the system so that the cancer part of your body actually gets some negative effects from the vitamin C as well as the normal cells getting some positive effects. So it's it's really a multi-use agent. And what I would always tell patients is unlike chemotherapy where if I give you that, um, it's not nice to any of your cells, cancer or non-cancer, vitamin C actually is helpful to the non-cancer part of you. So it's really it's it's really unique, and it's not mutually exclusive to only doing vitamin C or not. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah. So what is it about vitamin C that, that the cancer cells don't like, um, and what is it about vitamin C that the healthy cells do like? Well, in the case of uh, cancer cells, and there's, there's different um, – it's a deeper discussion, but to simplify it, at higher doses, which the traditional IV vitamin C for cancer is, is at higher doses than you would ever be able to take orally, uh, which is great for an IV setting then. Um, what it does is it creates a, um, an oxidative burst that if you are a, and so an oxidative burst is, is one of the goals of, uh, chemo, some chemotherapies, for example. The difference is, is that the octave burst in a human, the normal cells can neutralize it and then soak up the vitamin C from it and use it for good. Many, not all, but many cancer cells are actually uh, impeded by that octave burst because they don't, they don't have the same enzymes largely that human cells do. And so that octave burst to a cancer cell is more damaging. So it's not really that the, the vitamin C is really chemotherapy-like, it more gets your immune system interested in the in the uh, cancer cells, uh, and you know so the vitamin C does sort of a it's sort of like knocking the door down, and then the immune system can kind of go in and help out. So vitamin C is really a very uh, multi-purpose uh, agent in that respect. Yeah, and I know again if we have time later to talk more about the COVID and and why how it's been used for yeah. and as a, and for antiviral purposes probably. Probably pretty similar, but just um, I'm sure a lot of people, a lot of you out there, are wondering why are some of the other things that, you know, if you're going to be injecting something or or, or doing an IV, and and uh, um, you know, we're all curious, uh, we're all curious, Dr. Paul, what are some of the other IV therapies? What are some of the other uh, substances that you find yourself using, particularly in the treatment of cancer? And again, this is this is sure. this, these are like general ideas, and every person and what their needs would be different and what that would look like. But, but just to give us sort of, it's like I'm Italian. It's sort of a buffet of, uh, of yeah. options that, that are out there. Uh. Yes. Uh, so, you know, other things that uh, one nice thing about a research trial that's government-backed is once you have it in motion, you can do anything within the bounds of what you were approved to do. And we had broad approval. We would never get this approval today. Um, and so I was able to, if I could find a natural 
source product and have it made into an IV medication, I could use it. Okay. So another one that we started using that we were using before, but it was very quietly done, and now it's in research and stuff, was uh, uh, a part of the herb wormwood. Most people have heard of wormwood. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And uh, it's, it's, there's uh, artemisinins in there. That's one of the portions. Uh, artesanate is actually, so artemisinin is the oral part of wormwood. Um Artesanate is the injectable form it's used for malaria. Well, a lot of malaria drugs have been tried in cancer, and some have worked really well. And for many years, actually, uh, malaria drugs have been this way. Well, uh, artesanate uh, is very unique, and we weren't using it for malaria, but we actually had a patient come back from Europe who was doing very well with advanced breast cancer. And... Um, we, I got a hold of her oncologist in Germany, and we mimicked their protocol. And after the break, I'll tell you kind of how that all turned out. But, but wormwood, not in the whole plant, but as this extract, was very, very potent. Brilliant. All right, so you guys heard it. We do need to go for a break already, um, uh, but it'll be a short break. And so we're going to have more with, we're going to hear more about some of these IV therapies and so many other therapies for cancer and, and open up the possibilities for health and healing for all of you, all of us, um, with Dr. Paul when we come back. So don't go away. Acidophilus Ultra from New Roots Herbal is your go-to product for great health. To maintain potency, Acidophilus Ultra is protected by a natural water-based enteric coating. This daily probiotic supports your health in so many ways. It helps boost your immune system, aids digestion and bloating, and that's just for starters. So remember the name, Acidophilus Ultra from New Roots Herbal. Get some now. To find a store near you, visit NewRootsHerbal.com. That's NewRootsHerbal.com Audiobooks gives you instant access to over 50,000 of the best sellers and hottest book titles in romance, mystery, fiction, and many other genres. Just visit HealthyLife.net's advertiser page and click on Audiobooks to get started. YumFoodForLiving.com is the place to get easy, allergy-free recipes, all free of sugar, gluten, and dairy. But that's not all you'll get when you visit YumFoodForLiving.com. You'll get resources for all kinds of things like wellness articles, videos, podcasts, a blog, all to help you create easy, healthy living. There's even a 50-page downloadable book introducing you to the philosophy of yum. Don't wait. Visit YumFoodForLiving.com. YumFoodForLiving.com. That's YumFoodForLiving. Com. If you like to spend your television viewing time learning about some of the things that you may have missed in history class or if history was your favorite subject, then you should check out the link to the History Channel on the HealthyLife.net advertiser page. Order DVD sets by series or by subject matter right from our homepage while you still enjoy your favorite HealthyLife.net show. Being inspired by a speaker while learning everyday positive information that you can use to help your life is exactly what Dr. Teresa Nicasio does when she speaks in front of your group. From healthcare professionals to special needs parenting and everything in between, Dr. Teresa Nicasio can customize topics for your group on everything from health to psychology. To book Dr. Teresa Nicasio as a speaker for your group, visit yumfoodforliving.com or call 604-445-6463. That's 604-445. Four four five six four six three. You're listening to HealthyLife.net, the radio network that brings positive talk with positive change to make your world a little better. Welcome back to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show. If you are just tuning in, we're here with integrative oncologist and IV therapy researcher, I'm going to say pioneer, even though it wasn't the first pioneer. It's kind of was some of the early, uh, early researchers, earlier researchers in it. Uh, Dr. Paul Anderson, um, and we're talking about innovative approaches to cancer treatment. And before the break, we started uh, talking, and, and Dr. Paul was sharing a bit about IV therapies, which he is kind of a known 
he, he's an own go-to for doctors to consult with about this, and he trains a lot of folks about it. Cause he's been doing this since like the 1970s or something. Um, and so, yeah, so we were talking about vitamin C before the break, and then you just were talking about wormwood and um, uh, as, as some of the IV treatments that you've been, um, you know, using, dabbling with, particularly with cancer. What are some of the other, what are some of the others that you, um, you know, between the research you've done for NIH and other, um, you know, just the, in your in your regular treatment with folks at your clinic? Yeah. So. Um... An interesting thing with uh, just the tie a bow on the wormwood, our, our testinate is the injectable form, but there's a lot of oral use for it too. Um, what we discovered was that when we added the, the artesanate, uh, that part of the wormwood, as an IV before vitamin C, it improved uh, the survival outcome with our advanced breast cancer patients. We had a group of 40 patients split between IV or no IV. Um, and uh, and their length of survival was longer, which was very impressive. And mm-hmm. actually, our tessinate as a injectable is now licensed uh, to a number of drug companies. The negative side of that is they took it away from the public domain, uh, mm-hmm. so you can't really legally in America get that anymore. It was really sad. Um, mm-hmm. Another uh, really important one that we hear a lot about orally, and it's good because it works very well orally in cancer and a lot of other problems is curcumin. Uh, so curcumin is a part of turmeric, the herb. Um, curcumin is uh, a piece of it, a big piece of curcuminoids are a big piece of tur- turmeric. Um, but uh, obviously when you put things into an injectable form, it has to be very uh, purified and it can't be very complex or the immune system gets, uh, doesn't like that. So we uh, were able, again, because we had protection under the NIH to do these things, we were able to get a uh, pharmacy-made uh, curcumin injection. And what was exciting about that is curcumin, if you look at the research, you know, I always joke it, it should cure every disease because it seems to do all these things. But in advanced cancers, you often can't get enough orally to slow the cancer down. Hmm. What we were able to do is give people much higher doses intravenously for a short period of time, and it not only would reduce side effects of, say, surgery, especially brain surgery and uh, chemotherapy and stuff, but we actually had a group of 15 people with very aggressive cancers that nothing was helping, and they're all stage four. They were all going to die rather soon, and they did this high-dose curcumin and we actually had uh, the radiologist telling us that their metastases in their bones were reversing. And uh, wow. we had people living much longer than they normally would have. And then uh, I started to publicize that. And um, there's actually a drug now in oncology that's made from a modified curcumin molecule. And interestingly, uh, the same time that was in its final phases of testing, uh, the FDA made sure that we don't have curcumin for injection in the public domain anymore. So um, it, it, I'm saying this because it's not all a downer because the, there is avenues for these things in the drug world. It's just that it's the control of the money uh, when you have something that works. And it, the only thing that made me feel good at the end of that process was we helped those people, but also there's no drug companies going to put all the money in need to develop something like curcumin for an infusion unless it works. And so yeah. hopefully that will be more available later. Um, other things that we did were, um, uh, it, this has been in the news a little bit. It sounds weird, but in Europe it's done a lot. And it's actually an FDA-approved uh, thing. It's been around a long time. We used uh, um, intravenous uh, laser therapy, which really sounds crazy, but it's actually not because – the, you, you thread a, a fiber optic catheter into the vein, and you, you have different frequencies of light in the catheter. And as, it, as the blood goes over the catheter, it activates certain enzymes in the blood, et cetera. Um, and in, uh, in America a little bit and in Europe a lot, they will do this alone or they'll do it with a photosensitizer, and there's different things you can infuse. And what will happen is, when you activate the photosensitizer with the laser, it's actually uh, some of them have anti-cancer or cancer-blocking agents. So we did that. 
um, very interesting. Um, and uh, and a lot of you know just because it's, people will say, well, you know, I'm not going to get some of these things. Um, one of the things we found very important was if we were doing, say, uh, IV curcumin that was working really well, we often would have people taking it orally in between their IVs to kind of keep their blood levels up. And oral curcumin can be very useful. Uh, and, again, I'm not giving medical advice. You need to work with someone who knows this stuff, but it's you, just for your information. Same with the wormwood uh, artemisinin. That's the oral form. Um, we we would cycle that with people because you wormwood and artemisinin you don't want to take every day usually. Uh, but your practitioner might cycle that with you, especially around an IV vitamin C, be very very beneficial. And uh, I would say the most remarkable effects I saw were with curcumin, IV uh, vitamin C and artesanate, the wormwood uh, portion. Uh, very, very promising for extending quality of life and life. Um, and there are some other things that were what we call metabolic in uh, origin, um, something called DCA, which is an old, old drug that uh, is helps with metabolism. Uh, basically, it picks on the cancer cells and not your cells. Um, we did that in combination with other things. We read about it in the book a lot. Um, and it actually, we saw some very... Uh, bad cancer stabilized with that therapy, and that could be done orally or uh, intravenously as well. Um, and the same way they did with our testing, as soon as that started to show that it was working, uh, FDA has now made it so you can't get that in the public domain, and drug companies are developing it now. So that this whole thing of taking it away from the public and drug companies developing it is about money, and it's something that I have been to Washington and testified about and, and fought with, and right now we're losing that fight uh, because they have more money than anyone else. But, um, you know, it, it, things don't always stay the way they are. So I think the, the discoveries we made around some of these things that actually we would see people's cancer stop or regress, that's, that's tough to do any other way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, it's really sad when when money drives when money drives people's uh, empowerment around their health. That's uh, very frustrating. But thank you. I'm so glad that you're out there doing what you can to educate and, and lobby. And also, you know, we'll, we, we're going to be going to another break, um, <clears throat> and we're going to hear more about um, uh, perhaps some other uh, IV treatments, but other other um, outside the box cancer therapies um, when we come back. But also, you know, maybe we can talk about how. You, know, you mentioned about Europe and you know how there's some some things that happen in different places in the in the world that um, where things might be accessible for people. Those of you who are listening, uh, and actually a lot of our listeners, Paul, are you know because people this this uh, is broadcast 100 over 135 countries. So there's people all over the world who are. Um, who are listening who might actually have access and they're not limited to um, the, uh, you know, U- U.S. or Canadian, um, you know, what's what's available there so they may have things in their neck of the woods. So more from this, Dr. Paul. I've got a frog uh, when we come back, so stick around. Uh, uh, yeah, we'll talk to you in a bit uh, right after the break. There's a book that makes it so easy to embrace a healthy, gluten-free lifestyle, even kids will like it. Filled with heartwarming stories, food as medicine health tips, easy allergy-free recipes, and creative culinary inventions, the award-winning book, Yum! by Dr. Teresa Nicasio, is your source for all of this and more. So make gluten-free living easy, tasty, and fun. Get Yum! plant-based recipes for a gluten-free diet at Amazon.com or visit yumfoodforliving.com. That's Yum! foodforliving.com. You have too little time to shop, so try Farm Fresh to you. They deliver organic food the way nature intended, delivered straight to your home or office, economically. Visit our web advertiser page and click on Farm Fresh to you now. When you have a food allergy or dietary limitation, Dr. Teresa Nicasio knows it's hard to give up the foods you love, so she decided to put on her chef hat and give you affordable, personalized culinary consultations that will light up your taste buds. You'll explore a substitute ingredient so you can enjoy your favorite foods again. She'll even help you make food preparation easy and guide you on your path to healthy living. 
And to get started, all you have to do is call 604-445-6463. That's 604-445-6463. If you're not in the U.S., listen up. SureTrader is one of the most trusted and reliable names in share trading. With 6 to 1 leverage and other perks, SureTrade is the best for penny stocks and day trades. To find out more, visit our advertiser page and click on the SureTrader banner. YumFoodForLiving.com is the place to get easy, allergy-free recipes, all free of sugar, gluten, and dairy. But that's not all you'll get when you visit YumFoodForLiving.com. You'll get resources for all kinds of things like wellness articles, videos, podcasts, a blog, all to help you create easy, healthy living. There's even a 50-page downloadable book introducing you to the philosophy of yum. Don't wait. Visit YumFoodForLiving.com. YumFoodForLiving.com. That's YumFoodForLiving.com. Com. HealthyLife.net, the positive radio network. Welcome back. You're listening to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show. Here today with founder and medical director of the Anderson Medical Group uh, in Seattle, Washington. Um, anyway, we're talking about out-of-the-box cancer therapies, and we just before the break we were talking a bit about IV and injective, um, some some of the IV and injective therapies. And there's a, just a few more that Dr. Uh, Dr. Paul has to share with us, as well as some other awesome um, out-of-the-box treatments. So so I'm just going to let you. Let you run with run, take the ball and run with this, Paul, and, and just start run. talking about these. I'll run as quick as I can. Uh, so, other things that that we did that I think were uh, remarkable. Um, so, <coughs> excuse me, uh, DMSO is uh, something that has been popularized for use it on your joints, you know, topically and. If anyone's ever done that, you know, you kind of taste the sulfury smell in your mouth when you do it. It, it's, it absorbs through the skin, so people use it that way. Well, uh, DMSO, uh, under certain conditions, is actually been researched in cancer for both cancer pain but also for slowing cancer cells down. And there's, there's you know, 50 reasons why a DMSO does that with cancer that are kind of very complex, but... We've used it for a long time, especially for pain and for other purposes. Um, the DMSO uh, is the kind of thing where, like I was saying with curcumin, it might be incorporated in an IV therapy and, say, used with vitamin C IV or used with some other one, um, but it actually has benefit on its own. And one of the things with cancer that I think is really important is, especially if you have stage 3 or 4 cancer that's more advanced, the the goal of most patients is the best quality of life they can have. And, of course, if you can extend their life, that's even better. Um, and quality of life is predicated on uh, the lower amount of pain you have, the better the better you sleep, et cetera, et cetera. So pain becomes a huge thing in, in the care of people with advanced cancers. DMSO is one of those things, kind of like vitamin C, that can help with the pain but also uh, aggravate the cancer itself and help with the immune response. So DMSO is something, and, and that's something we've actually had people also do topically. Again, that's by prescription, and you need an integrated provider to help you. But that's that's another one that we saw a lot of benefit with. Mm-hmm. Um, another that is is gaining popularity and is actually having some really good research in Europe is uh, low dose naltrexone (LBN). And naltrexone is a, is a relative of naloxone, which is they're both opiate blocking drugs. So you hear about Narcan or naloxone for heroin overdoses. Well, we're not using it like that. Low dose naltrexone is tiny, tiny doses that have an immune effect. And there's actually um, research now on cancer cells with naltrexone. We've been using it for 10 at least years with cancer. And it's it's not a one trick thing like most things, but lotus naltrexone is easy to prescribe. It's oral. Uh, many many kinds of doctors use lotus naltrexone, and it can benefit your immune system's fight against the cancer cells, even with or without chemotherapy, with or without other therapies. They actually did really groundbreaking research in Europe uh, around cancer and chemosensitizing and cancer cell irritation. Um, 
and and they did a um, if you look on uh, YouTube, there's a there's a film a documentary called uh, LDM the Game Changer. So there's another movie called The Game Changer. This is LDM the Game Changer. You look and look it up. They interviewed myself, a number of other doctors, and that uh, about our experiences with LDM and the researchers as well. So now trexones are really important one, I think for one of the many facets of cancer therapy, and it's a it's very available, which is great. That's um, great. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I don't know how much time we have left. And oh, we've got we've got plenty, and we also still have one more segment after this to, to wrap okay. things up. Okay. So I guess we're good. Sometimes. So like I, mistle, I, I don't know mistletoe therapy, <laughs> me, um, melatonin, um, IV, yes. or, or uh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, I think. Um, uh, yeah, because I can talk for as long as anyone needs. Um, mistletoe therapy, and I know the first time I heard about it, I thought, what? You know, right. <laughs> um, has nothing is, to do with is, kissing, I don't think, right? <laughs> not, it doesn't really. It's, it sounds good, though. Uh, and, I, and you look at mistletoe as an herb, and it's a, it's an invasive herb, and it's a fairly toxic herb for the most part. Um, but when you inject, and it's not whole herb, again, it's extracted, but when you inject ex, the extracted part of mistletoe, which there's many forms, it creates immune responses. And here, here's the thing. Your immune system, the more you can get it to engage with your cancer, the slower your cancer will grow and, and all of that. And they've been doing, you know, mistletoe-based therapies in Europe for much longer than we have in North America. But at this point, there's something like over 25,000 publications, scientific publications about mistletoe. Most of them are about cancer. So it's not like an unknown quantity. Mm-hmm. And often the way that it's used is to, again, either a, a subcutaneous injection like a, you do for, say, diabetic medicine, really shallow, uh, or intravenously maybe with uh, in series with other things. And it's used, like I say, to stimulate the immune system to have a response. And so it's a very uh, stimulating therapy, but much like we were saying with the MSO and some of the other things, even in real advanced cancers, we've seen it help people with their uh, pain, uh, with other quality of life issues, because it actually gets the, the cancer sort of on its heels a little bit. Um, and also in people who get to mistletoe therapy a little bit earlier, um, we've seen it really uh, slow cancers down, and it's used as a part of a bigger therapy, but mistletoe is really an important player. Um, Right now, available in North America pretty readily through practitioners who do that. Uh, very available in Europe and other countries. Uh, it's very, like I say, in Europe they've been doing this a lot longer. Um, and, and the other one that people hear, and this is an oral, this is not not an injection, uh, is high dose melatonin. So people think about melatonin like three milligrams for sleeping or something, which does help with that. It helps put you sleep. High dose melatonin is actually a hormone in your body, and it has so many, it's like vitamin D, it has so many functions that beyond its famous function. So melatonin's famous function is sleep. It does a lot of immune, um, you could say immune modulation or switching. So at higher doses, and again, this is done by your healthcare practitioner, um, melatonin actually has anti-cancer benefits. And in most cancers, and regardless of what other therapies you're doing, melatonin can be a very beneficial add-on therapy um, and, uh, at, as I was saying, pretty high doses. Um, they, they don't have to be all the same dose, but they're much higher than the three milligrams you think of. Um, so melatonin is one of the integrated cancer practitioner that you're likely to hear about. LDN you're very likely to hear about in North America and elsewhere. Uh, LDN's kind of pretty big in the UK and other other areas over there. Um, and and one of the things about it is, you know, most of these therapies, because insurances don't pay for them and all that, they're, they can be expensive. Things like L- low-dose naltrexone and melatonin are relatively inexpensive compared to many other therapies. Mm-hmm. Um, and so a lot of people, you know, find it's... Mm-hmm. Yeah, wonderful. 
Well, guys, we need to take another break, and I'm hoping that Dr. Paul will be able to at least uh, just touch on this concept of immunotherapy. I know that it helped our friend Carlotta tremendously. Uh, but most importantly, after the break, we want to hear a little bit about this amazing culinary guy. He, uh, You talk about food as medicine, and those of you who have my book, Yum, and know how I'm so into you know food as medicine, but also just you know, just clean eating. Um, but he's got some, uh, you know, favorite things. He's, you know, he's, you know, making making your own, you know, using like mushrooms and you're cooking in, in some creative ways. And so when he comes back, he can talk about that and then also hopefully a few words about his books and um, and what he's what he's doing. He is a rock star. Uh, it's just, I'm so excited to, to hear more about it when he comes back uh, right after the break. Stick around. Acidophilus Ultra from New Roots Herbal is your go-to product for great health. To maintain potency, Acidophilus Ultra is protected by a natural water-based enteric coating. This daily probiotic supports your health in so many ways. It helps boost your immune system, aids digestion and bloating, and that's just for starters. So remember the name, Acidophilus Ultra from New Roots Herbal. Get some now. To find a store near you, visit NewRootsHerbal.com. That's NewRootsHerbal.com VMware is a fresh perspective for virtualization on the cloud. Shaping the future, this all in one platform delivers virtual cloud service on any cloud. Visit our HealthyLife.net's advertiser page and click on VMware. When you have a food allergy or dietary limitation, Dr. Teresa Nicasio knows it's hard to give up the foods you love, so she decided to put on her chef hat and give you affordable, personalized culinary consultations that will light up your taste buds. You'll explore or substitute ingredients so you can enjoy your favorite foods again. She'll even help you make food preparation easy and guide you on your path to healthy living. And to get started, all you have to do is call 604-445-6463. That's 604-445-6463. For the best in business class travel, count on Cheapo Air. Cheapo Air has the best price guarantee, 24-7 customer service, and easy booking online or by phone. To experience your hassle-free journey, start by going to HealthyLife.net's advertiser page and click on Cheapo Air. There's a book that makes it so easy to embrace a healthy, gluten-free lifestyle, even kids will like it. Filled with heartwarming stories, Food is Medicine Health Tips, Easy Allergy-Free Recipes, and Creative Culinary Inventions. The award-winning book, Yum! by Dr. Teresa Nicasio, is your source for all of this and more. So make gluten-free living easy, tasty, and fun. Get Yum! Plant-Based Recipes for a Gluten-Free Diet at Amazon.com. Or visit YumFoodForLiving.com. That's YumFoodForLiving.com. Radio your way. HealthyLife.net. Welcome back to the Dr. Teresa Nicasio Show. We are here today with award-winning naturopathic doctor and leading integrative oncologist, Dr. Paul Anderson, talking about IV therapies and other cutting-edge frontiers in cancer research and treatment. And, um, uh, yes, yeah, so, so is there anything else on, the, on some of those other treatments and maybe immunotherapy you wanted to share, uh, Paul? Yeah, um, so in, in the time we have left, I think the topic of immunotherapy is a big area people are going to be seeing grow, both on the standard oncology side but also the integrative side. Um, I've been involved uh, not so much with the NIH project, but since then I've been a consultant on uh, with people outside of our country, especially there's a cancer hospital in uh, Mexico that I work with and consult for, and uh, we actually work with a university down there to develop immunotherapies. And as I was saying earlier, um, one of the one of the big goals with uh, cancer treatment, especially integrative treatment, and more and more standard treatment too, is if we can get your your immune system involved in the fight more in a more focused manner. Your immune system is the only reason you don't have cancer every day of your life. So if we can have it do that job better. When you do have cancer, you have uh, generally longer life, better outcomes, et cetera. 
So immunotherapies are, that's a big term that covers anything that could affect your immune system will affect, um, will affect your cancer. So an immunotherapy could be anything under that umbrella. But uh, some examples of things are, uh, for example, with the uh, university in, in Mexico, we were working with um, uh, taking, uh, say, from a biopsy of the tumor, and they, they do this in some research in the U.S. too, uh, in developing a targeted therapy against your particular tumor, which is, you know, a specific thing. There's also things that are done with extracting from your blood uh, uh, certain types of immune cells and then uh, helping them to multiply through various means. Um, so immunotherapies are, you know, here's the crossover to what we were talking about. A lot of the things we talked about, like mistletoe and vitamin C and our testinate and stuff, they help your immune system in some of their mechanisms. Well, this is how sort of completing the circle and helping your immune system through other means. Big, big area of cancer treatment. And really personalized medicine. And we had uh, Rick Shapiro on talking about, um, uh, I forget, the hope, oh, whatever. But they, basically a lot of cases where, where one of the primary things that people did use was they had the extraction of their cancer cells. They were able to figure out uh, and, and experiment and see which, uh, which even chemotherapy or other treatment would be uh, appropriate and then would specifically inject those uh, so they would know that your unique body, how your body responded. Pretty exciting stuff yeah very very much and I, I like I was saying I think this is the direction that things are going in in cancer therapy uh, which is good because um, we've just you know we've been working with 50 60 year old cancer treatments for too long so it's a really great move great great direction um, I think before the break we talked a little bit about uh, uh, the uh, something we didn't talk about here is the use of mushroom extracts on cancer and other immune things. We did a lot of that in the research project, and that that's actually kind of almost mainstream because for whatever reason they like mushrooms. Um, but one of the You're things talking about like I, lion's I a, mane or like lion's yeah, mane yeah, or like some of those? things like turkey tail and lion's mane, and and then some like. Uh, some of the like uh, shiitake mitake combos and they, there's a lot of stuff around like mushrooms you can talk about for days it's just that deep um but those are those are ones that actually you, if you look up for instance lion's mane or uh turkey tail and cancer you'll actually find a fair number of research uh, articles mm -hmm. done mm -hmm. um but one of the things i did uh that i think you saw too was a, a program on my podcast where i was talking about making uh, mushroom extract, and I, I just found it curious that uh, this recipe from probably the 15 or 1600s, first written down in the 1700s, uh, for a condiment, which was basically a multiple mushroom extract that they would wildcraft the mushrooms and make for their, you know, use in their kitchen, um, is contains a lot of the beneficial mushroom things that are helpful to your immune system. You think about it all those years, they didn't know that part, but they're using it in their food every day. And, and just think if we if we all were doing that, maybe we'd be healthier along with other things that, you know, we, we might want to do. Um, so mushrooms and mushroom extracts are a huge part of immune uh, modulation, immune helping. And some can be very specific. Sometimes you want like a mixture uh, and again, if, if you're, if you have active cancer, you're working with an integrated provider, they're going to be able to kind of guide you during the, the process. Mm -hmm. But I've even seen some research that, you know, but something like people, I forget exactly, I just saw it like the last couple of weeks. Uh, you know, if you eat, like people who eat mushrooms, like just eat mushrooms, uh, a couple times a week or something, that there was some, um, some longevity imp um, impacts that uh, were reported. And I yeah. forget exactly where I saw that. Yeah. Yeah, it, I, I know. Uh, so that story went around a lot on social media last week, which is really great. It, it and people often think, well, you know, you have to have these strong extracts and stuff. Even white button mushrooms, which are very available almost everywhere, people who ate a reasonable serving two, three times a week, it improves the immune markers that improve cancer outcomes and all sorts of other chronic, you know, diseases things. Um, and, and it's not that hard. Like you're not talking about eating 
pounds of mushrooms every day. Um, yeah. And, and yeah. people think, oh, white butt mushrooms, they're, they're not the, you know, kind of sexy, exciting ones that people write about. But they, all mushrooms have these immune properties, and eating, it, eating your medicine is the best way to get it if you can. <laughs> Absolutely. And so you know, on that note, well, first of all, mushrooms, do they need to be cooked? Do they not need to be cooked? This is the question that a lot of people have been asking. Yeah, and there's there's like a ton of um, – it's disagreement, but what disagreement means is there's not one answer. So you get some components from uh, cooking it. You get some from doing extractions, like with an acid like vinegar. You get some mm-hmm. from drying it. You get some from just eating the mushroom. And so the best thing is, um, it, like for culinary mushrooms, if you can do a little bit of both, have some raw, you know, in your salads and – have some that are cooked or sautéed or something, you probably get a little more of the full bouquet of, you know, the extracts. But eating them is the first step. If you like them raw and you only want to eat them raw, you're still going to get benefits. If you mm-hmm. like to sauté them or whatever, you're still going to get benefits. Mm-hmm. Um, and and it, that's a more complex discussion. But that's actually a big uh, – uh, that's a very big deal. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're getting short on time, and I'm going to need to be winding up, but I, I don't want to uh, go off now. First of all, you all know, go to TeresaNicasio.com. Dr. Paul has a page with links to, you know, his Facebook, his uh, Instagram, his, um, you know, Consult Dr. A. But Consult Dr. A, that's kind of the primary go-to for folks. If, um, is it ConsultDrA.com, Paul? Yes. So the ConsultDrA.com is a site I originally developed for healthcare practitioners, so a lot of the information there is that, but it, it is searchable. Um, if you want information, it's there. Uh, for example, that uh, on, on uh, Dr. Anderson's uh, IV monographs, those were a lot of the things developed during that uh, research project, and we've had a lot of people, they're free PDFs people can download, a lot of people share those with their other healthcare providers for information. For That's instance, perfect. the vitamin C and the chemotherapy one. So there, there's a lot of free stuff on there. Exactly. Books, and I've, um, I just want to thank you for being here, joining us today, Paul. And I also want to thank all of you out there for tuning in today and say thank you again to our show sponsor, New Roots Herbal, for making this program possible. Be sure to uh, join us next time for my Bon Voyage show. Uh, I'll be saying goodbye for a little while at least when Dr. Elaine Fogelschneider will be with us talking about the healing power of touch. Uh, to learn more about all of our guests and get other awesome free wellness resources, uh, visit Teresa's Wellness Hub at TeresaNicasio.com. I'm Teresa, and this has been the Dr. Teresa. Teresa Nicasio Show. Until next time, be well, live well, and love well. Adios.